Darren the Gorilla Till. It's been a little while since we've been able to It hasn't sit down been like that long, this. John. <laughs> it has. I think the last time I came down here and we did something similar, you've just got the bus in. Things have changed since then though, right? I've did all I'm in a minibus now, a little. <laughs> <laughs> and and your teeth are repaired. My teeth are looking good, John. They're, I mean you can sell them. You can they, sell them. Are, they are spectacular. What have the big highlights been for you in your UFC career? Liverpool, fighting in Liverpool against two or four teams that everyone knows. Oh! What if I go down? And fighting at Madison Square Garden. That was like a comeback from two vicious defeats. Darren Till back into the win column in a big way. I've had a lot of good highlights mm. in and out, but for me, joint number one would have to be them two because they're special to me. You've had to bounce back from adversity and, and some setbacks. You know, how have you managed to do that? If I can describe it from my point of view and my perspective, a lot of guys get in this sport and they're happy with just of being in the sport and then getting out and going on to do something else. Hey, hey. I know I want to be one of the best fighters ever to have lived in the sport of MMA. Not boxing, not anything else, but MMA. So, like, strip all that away and I don't want to be sat here next year going, do you know what? Sold out this, sold out that, beat him, beat him. I don't want that like to ever be said. I want people to say, see him there, Darren Till, see the things he done, look back on it, he was one of the best ever. Remind us why we had to see middleweight down and not, not down at 170. It's the lifestyle, John, like, it was always more focus on weight than training a lot. I think I just outgrew it a little bit, so instead of the rigorous cuts, now it's, don't even think about the way cutting on me. So just, I don't, I don't give it a second thought. I, I could probably still make welterweight. No, you could. Oh, sorry. Could you? I think. No, one, I mean, you, I you think, know your body. I know Usman wants to fight me, Kamara Usman. I know he said that. He said I still want to fight Till, and we've got a little bit of history. You know, good guy, sound guy. I think it's him and Leon destined to fight. Leon going to take that title, but I'm going to be the champion at middleweight. Why, why can't I go down for one last hurrah and see if I can, you know, get, grab that strap that I was meant to have? So your entry into the middleweight division, it was straight in. Come into the middleweight division and, and you know, I've, I beat Gaslam and then obviously I've just fought Robert Whittaker in a close fight. I lost, you know, maybe if I've defended one extra takedown, I won, but I lost the fight and now I've seen what Whittaker's done to a few opponents. I think he's just absolutely phenomenal. It just shows me where I'm at in the division, mate. I was very privileged to be on the mic that night. It was a real chess match, very, very tight. Stress match, I call it. Stress match, Stress Ooh. match. I love that little uh, that the thing you and him had yeah. where... When he's going to me, that's all you killed, and I'm like, I know, mate, I'm trying to get you. I'm trying to see what he does. I am trying to move a shoulder, move something. Okay, right, I know every time I do that, he does this. I caught him out a few times, you know, like, first time when he ran in, I just thought, right, there's the other bump. I want to run it back for him. He won't be taking me down this time on me little ruptured knee. So off the back of that fight, you tried to come back, but the injury that mm. you incurred during that fight, yeah. then you weren't able to, to no, fight. I was Manson. fighting one of the guys from uh, Lord of the Rings, and uh... <laughs> you had to get it in there early. I haven't even been able to say his name yet. Well, Oh, he's Master Oh. What's his name? Marvin. <laughs> I was in this very gym talking to you about that fight, and you were so respectful. What changed? I'm still respectful. Well, I'm oh. not sure if it, I mean, if you were to ask <laughs> Marvin Vittori in his camp, I'm not, I'm not so sure. I think my name's a bit sour in that camp. <laughs> Maybe so. The thing that done my head in was, right, I'm grinding, I'm grinding, I'm grinding, and then a freak accident, you know, I broke my collarbone. It means if I would have been able to fight with that broken collarbone, I was fighting. Then he's like, I don't even know if Till's injured. I just seen him say that, and I was just like, don't start this, and so I was just come out with this big text. And everyone was just like, has he really just called him an all? And then, now me and Marvin don't speak. <laughs> <laughs> right now, I think a lot of people see Darren as the funny guy, and it's easy to not take you so seriously with your fight yeah, aspirations, but I think it's important for you to underline, this is still the core of what I'm trying to do. The other stuff is just a, a little yeah. sideshow. I like to keep it enjoyable. Yeah. I like to scare sponsors away with all my contributions. <laughs> 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 so, that's just it, John. Like, good or bad, I'm keeping everyone entertained. You are, you are indeed. 2021, then. What's the perfect scenario? I, I want to fight twice, mate. I want to put on two clinics. Then that's it. The champ's there for me. It's a rally of punches here from Darren Till. What a stoppage! I am the best fighter in the world. I know that. Deep down inside of me. I know that.